What's up guys and welcome back to the garage. This morning we've got a special review um, of the, well, of my uncle's truck. And um, this morning I've got the uh, opportunity to take a look at it and bring it to you guys. Here it is. This is a 2022 Ram 3500 Cummins High Output Limited Trim Night Edition. Um, I think I got everything in there. It is quite a name, but uh, yeah, as you can see, this is the Dually, um, and it is quite a truck. I've had a chance to drive it down here from Sacramento, um, and I'll tell you all about the ride. We'll go for a ride a little bit later, but I wanted to sort of point out, highlight, and go through everything that I've noticed so far, and um, give you guys a general review of, of really how awesome this truck is. Um, I know I'm biased because I own one, but not you know, the high output version, not the dually, not the crew cab. So we're gonna go through, take a look at everything and see what there is to see about this guy. Starting off in the front with the night edition that brings you the blacked out grill, same as in my truck. The headlights on the limited are a little different. You've got four different LEDs as opposed to one sort of bulb like this one. Uh, I did notice driving this at night that when you turn the wheel these guys in the middle they do swivel um, which is kind of a nice feature uh, my truck the fog light would turn on the left fog light would turn on if you turn left um, but it does not you know swivel as these guys do on the limited you got the blacked out headlight housing here um, come around you got the blacked out badges front wheels are the LT 235 ADR 17s uh, these are from the factory. It looks like a Nexon tire, uh, nothing special. Uh, from the back, same Nexon tires. We've got, again, 235 ADR 17s on the back here on the duals. Blacked out wheels here. Underneath, you got the spare. And if we look real close back in here, you'll see we've got the air ride and the leaf springs. So this truck is auto air leveling. Pull out the keys. Here's a key fob. Um, tailgate does automatically lower. Gives us access to this eight foot bed with the bed liner. We've got the trailer har harness wiring up in the bed along with a 400 watt cargo outlet. Uh, you can see this truck has the fifth wheel prep package. Um, and he did have a fifth wheel in here, fifth wheel hitch in here. Um, and I, all I can say is about this eight foot bed, guys, is it's huge, absolutely massive. I, I had the six foot four and um, not too many situations where I would need or want an eight foot bed, but if I did, you know, hauling a lot of plywood, this, this would certainly be quite useful. Um, coming on back to the rear seats coming in here looking at the rear seats you can see my uncle's chosen to put the uh, carhartt seat covers on here i might look at getting some of these for my truck with the dog um you know with possible family in the future who knows these would probably do a really nice job of protecting the seats so um i do like this add-on upgrade they fit pretty well uh anyway seats themselves same as the 2500 you got this center block falls down you got some cup holders um for the crew cab my mega cab has a full seat cup holders there um which this has as well you've got another 400 watt uh, full size outlet here you've got the USB A, USB C uh, heated seats just as in my laramie again this is the limited trim so you've got the uh, sort of wood grain here the nice stitching here and in the door along with the wood grain in the door other than that the only other difference is this bezel around the speaker that i've seen that's a uh, sort of a, a shinier metallic rather than the black plastic that i have same uh, all other formats that i've got in my truck when i did the review on my truck i did not have these in here at the time these are a fantastic addition i highly recommend them <clears throat> coming in here you get two more cup holders uh and in terms of folding the seats up, the mega cab, the seats come down, these guys simply lift up. Um, 
I grab it under the seat. Now, when you want to uh, utilize this floor space, they do have these guys, which lift up and over and fold flat like a table. And then you've got, you know, a flat section uh, where you can lay stuff in here. So not quite as much room as the Mega Cab, but um, it is quite a nice feature to have stuff lay flat, have stuff lay flat and not uh, wobble about. So put these guys back down. Okay, we're gonna go hop into the back seat here. Now, unlike the Mega Cab over there, these guys, these seats do not recline, but they are still quite comfortable. I am 5'11 and a bit, um, not quite six. I've got, uh, I'd say three and a half inches here, three inches between my knees and the front of the seat. Um, and this is, you know, where I was driving with it. Uh, so there's plenty of space. Um, and again, you've got quite a large middle seat. It's not as large width wise as the, uh, mega cab simply because it's not a mega cab the reason being is these pillars these back pillars here are behind the seats in the mega cab allowing these seats to uh, come farther to the edge of the truck on both sides a little bit more and you know, gives you a little bit more width in that middle seat uh, that said everything is quite comfortable back here uh, even though they don't recline uh, i do quite find myself utilizing the space behind my seats in the mega cab a lot um, if you don't like just throwing everything in the bed, that might be an option for you to consider. Otherwise, these, uh, the back seat is very similar to the Mega Cab uh, and also very, very comfortable. Move on up to the front here, pop the engine, engine bay. There we go. Hood releases right here. And before we get up to the engine bay, I'm going to talk about these steps. So these are the factory Mopar steps. They look nice, however, they do not do two things uh, as well as the amp steps which is kind of weird to hear me say because i'm not a huge fan of the amp steps in terms of fitment on the truck they're very difficult to fit uh, but when these fold up there we go they're pretty visible um, they don't hide the pinch weld seam at all you can see the pinch weld seam bolts they don't um, tuck back very well Looking over at uh, my truck there, my steps have been tucked completely up and under the pinch weld behind it. These guys are real visible, so they do stick down a little bit more. Um, not so great for um, ground clearance, if that is you know something that you care about. Um, otherwise, the look and finish of them is superb, the Mopar steps here. The only other problem, I guess the only other two issues I see is they take forever to open up. Um, you open the door, you gotta wait maybe half a second before you can step here. Uh, and then the last thing is there's no lights that come with these. I'm sure you could tap into the power, you know, the 12 volt power that uh, actuates these steps to put on some aftermarket lights. But for a hundred grand for this truck, I would expect that uh, maybe a light or two would be nice at night because you cannot see these come over here to the door sticker you've got a uh, 5042 pound payload i think 32,000 towing uh, max towing which is absolutely incredible and a 14,000 pound gbwr which puts this truck at just under just just under 9,000 um, pounds so this is quite a heavy truck coming to the front you can actually see in this light uh, here he's chosen to do the 3m clear bra this stuff is great for protecting the front from, you know, nicks, scratches, rocks, that type of thing on the bumper, the hood, and the hood surround here. Go ahead and pop the hood. Like I said, I had a chance to drive this truck from Sacramento uh, back here. Well, my brother drove it from Sacramento back here. I drove my truck, and it gave us a nice, interesting opportunity to compare the fuel mileage between the 3500 high output Dually and the Ram 2500 over there, standard output. Now, um, I will say the fuel economy is not as good in the high output. Now, I know it's not as aerodynamic. I know it's an extra almost 800 pounds, 
and I know it's uh, got the two wheels in the back for extra friction. I know it's not as aero with the, the dually hips in the back there. However, I do think the main reason it's not quite as efficient. Uh, when I say not as efficient, what we noticed was on the trip computer in here, it was saying about 16, 15, seven, and this is completely stock. Um, there's only, you know, 2,700 miles on this. There's no lift, there's no aftermarket tires. Um, that truck with the three inch lift and 37s, I was averaging um, about 18, so a little over a mile and a half per gallon better. Um, I think the main reason, other than the added weight, but you know, let's be real, this is a Cummins, it's not gonna notice 800 pounds, um, and maybe a little bit on the aerodynamics. I think the main reason for the, uh, the mile per gallon difference is that this truck has a different compression ratio. In order to make that higher power, um, I'll say just as reliably, its compression ratio has dropped from, well, that truck's compression ratio is 19 to one. And uh, this one is 16.2 to one. So because of that, uh, it's not gonna be as efficient. And uh, I think that comes out to play when we look at the miles per gallon number. Other than that though, this thing is very, very torquey. The Ison transmission, um, I've not had a chance to tow with. I've not had a chance to tow with the Ison transmission. Uh, but it definitely lugs harder, the exhaust brake hits harder, and you can certainly feel it more. It feels like a heavier duty transmission. From what I've read and found, it's 64% uh, stronger than the 68 RFE. Uh, and I, I believe it, you know, just feeling the downshifts and, you know, with the exhaust brake on. Accelerating on the highway, it does not feel as fast as this truck. I think just due to the way it's been set up. Uh, it's more focused on the torque and putting that power to use towing and hauling rather than you know getting off the line um, i i say i say that simply because i tried getting up on the freeway and didn't feel as fast either the pants wise now if you go ahead and put this into tow haul mode change the shift points even if you're not towing or hauling anything which i realize is ridiculous it does rev higher and you do start to feel that acceleration you know throughout the the power curve getting up to speed with that in mind, let's go ahead, give this guy a start and hop in the front and take it for a drive. It is a cold morning, wait for the preheat. There we go. You can see the uh, sort of side marker light here in red and the uh, front side marker in amber. This truck, I don't know if you can see it in the sun, it looks like you can a little bit. We've got the amber cab marker lights up top take a look at the front seat now while it warms up front door in the limited um, only difference really from the Laramie is this uh, metallic looks metallic really is plastic um, inset and the nice stitching here along with the wood grain there uh, and then the wood grain in there this is um, as this sort of wood grain down here is in fact present in the Laramie Again, you got the sort of metallic looking bezel, the Harman Kardon speakers. Um, otherwise, everything in here, front of the truck wise, is, is very similar to the Laramie, uh, except for the steering wheel. Moving over to the passenger side, everything is very, very similar. We've got the floor mats, the sort of engine protruding into the uh, footwell of the passenger side there same as my truck you've got your glove box down there the lower glove box upper glove box there this glove box unlike the laramie the limited spelled out there and you got your wood grain there passenger door uh, the same as the driver's side door tweeter speaker just below the a pillars um, one thing i really do care for about this uh, trim level is the grab handle on the a pillar has this nice stitched um, nice stitched uh, sort of leather addition to it. Um, coming in, starting up the truck here, we've got the 22 soft run that you connect, which I am not as used to, but uh, it is a cold morning out. Um, my truck said 36. I know this one says 45, but it just hasn't gotten a chance to warm up and acclimate yet. Turn these guys on. There we go. There we go. Save my fingers when we go for that drive here in a bit. Gauge cluster, uh, same deal as the, as the Laramie, um, as the 21 Laramie. The only difference is you've got the blue surround on both side gauges. Um, got your 12 in, 
um, 12 inch screen there. You got your digital LED readout here. Uh, you've got the uh, drivetrain, drive line information, uh, and then the off-road pages in a dually. Kind of funny, but it's there anyway. This drive assist feature is really nice for somebody who's not used to the dually, uh, especially the width. If you, you know, you're driving and you end up, you know, kissing one of the sides of the lane, it'll tell you which side and put you back in the center. Uh, if that's something you're not quite confident with, or if you've never driven a dually before, um, and, and you're looking to kind of get used to it, this is maybe training wheels for it. Uh, fuel economy, again, about 16. It was a little bit higher than this when we got into town, just doing the highway miles, uh, but it's right about here. Um, it hasn't been, like I said, as great as the, uh, the standard output, and I think that's simply because of the compression ratio. Uh, we come on down to that trip, and that's what we were driving back at now. Trailer tow conditions not met because there is no trailer, but that's where you would, you know, connect everything with your two and seven pin, four and seven pin wiring. Um, audio, same as the, uh, as my RAM messages, this is where your text messages would show up if you had any. Um, now, this is how you'd program the screen. You don't need to do it. Commercial settings. Um, this truck, unlike mine, came with the aux switches from factory. If you're interested in that, I've got a, a video I can throw in the link here, uh, sort of throw up in a card in the corner. But essentially, the passcode to get in there is all four zeros. Same for all these factory trucks. Uh, the aux switches, pin setup, you can change the pin. If you want to take a look at the aux switches, you can program each one. If you want to take a look at aux one, you can change the type. That would be latching or momentary. Uh, momentary means it's only sending power to your auxiliary device when you're holding the switch down. Latching is like a light switch in your house. It stays on when you press it, it turns off when you press it again. Um, so that's where you would program those guys in the commercial settings. Um, come on down, here's your speedometer, and then here's your vehicle diagnostics. I usually drive with the temp and all the other sort of gauges here, uh, but you can roll through and just check all the other settings. Here's the uh, tire pressure, uh, coolant, trans, all the other sort of, I'll say important metrics. Here's the DPF if you want to review that. So far, when I've been driving my truck for the 23,000 miles I've had it, I've not seen this change. The gauge is the gauge. It never moves off of zero. It'll just say diesel particulate filter is zero out of 100, and then it'll regen every 700 miles uh, or thereabouts. Um, oil life filter, fuel filter life, battery voltage, exhaust brake, and back to the gauges. So with that in mind, we'll take it for a drive, and uh, I'll bring you guys along, set you up on a uh, tripod, and we'll just get a chance or get a sense to see what this overall drivability is like and what the ride quality is like. Okay, before we head out, I did have a couple other items that I wanted to bring up. Again, two wheel drive, four wheel drive high, four wheel drive low. Um, this truck has the aux switches, like I mentioned. It's got an alternate trailer height option. Uh, this is the only option my truck does not have with the auto air leveling suspension in this one. You press this button the tailgate does drop down makes loading certain items a lot easier with that in mind let's go ahead and head out and uh, see how this truck feels to drive compared to a regular 2500 now first thing you'll notice well i'll notice and you'll hear about is the uh, suspension being a lot rougher come out of the driveway turn this boat around Again, this is actually quite helpful if you want to see um, where you're at in a tight spot, tight parking area, and you're not sure how much room you got, take a look at the top, look at your rear view tow mirrors, and you're clear easily. So, again, for such a large vehicle, having all these cameras can be quite handy. Now, I do apologize for the vibrating, but again, this is an empty 3500, and uh, it does ride a lot stiffer than my 2500. Now my 2500 was fairly stiff from the factory, but nowhere near as stiff as this. I have since put on those, the uh, Carly three and a quarter lift, um, which softened it up quite a lot. The factory rear springs um, had their capacity reduced to 85% of stock. I compensated for that with the airbags that I put on after, but this truck is going to be quite a lot stiffer. Um, Again, you're getting a towing number increase from my truck. Well, it was 17,000. 
and then Ram reduced it to 14 for some reason on their uh, website. TFL did a great video on their channel talking about that. This truck tows 32,000. So with that in mind, um, you're gonna get the stiffer ride. Uh, payload for this truck, like I said earlier, 5,042. My truck is 1,970, so almost 2,000. So you get an extra 3,000 pounds of payload with the 3,500 dually. Now that the engine's kind of warmed up, we can go ahead, head back around to the main road and uh, see how it feels. Actually, I think what I'm going to do is uh, head up this hill and just give it a little bit and see how it handles. So there it revved up to 2500. Um, heading up the hill simulated a little bit of a load, I guess. Um, but I, I did feel it kick in a little bit better on the hill than I would say on the flat when you put the pedal down. Uh, but I, I do really kind of see where the ice and transmission would excel in towing or hauling. It just feels a little different, it feels a little bit heavier even than the 68 RFE. Uh, and coming from a 1500 initially, I, the 68 RFE felt heavier, but uh, this is no comparison. It, it's quite a lot more stout, you can feel it uh, in drivability wise. So we'll head down out to the main road. Um, and, and just kind of see how bumpy things are. I mean, you can kind of tell with the camera bouncing up and down that uh, this is not not the same as a 2500. For the most part, the ride isn't, you know, I'll, I'll call it like something to turn you off in one of these trucks. Although you're not buying the 3500 Dually for the ride quality. But if you are kind of interested, it's not really something that I'd say is a problem for most situations when you're driving on a good road, you wouldn't really notice. When you hit manhole covers, you definitely feel it a little bit more than my truck. Um, for comparison's sake, there's some speed bumps in my mom's neighborhood that I've gone over several times in my truck and in this truck. This truck, you kind of top out at 20 before you start sending the passengers in the back for a ride. My truck, you can do that same thing with the Carly lift. Again, not factory. It's definitely a suspension upgrade at around 40. Uh, when it was factory, 25, 28 would get you that same kind of uneasy, squeamish feeling of potentially sending the passengers up into the roof. Um, now, as far as options go, a lot of these things are available on the Laramie. Um, pretty much everything in here I have, with the uh, exception of the alternate trailer height and the uh, lane keep assist and the sort of uh, the smart, I'll call it the smart cruise control, the one that you know drives for you. I don't have that. Um, I'm sure it could be an option, it's just not on my truck. Um, you do have the heated and cooled seats, the heated steering wheel. Uh, I'm not as familiar with the latest um, sort of Uconnect software, the 22 Uconnect software, but it has all the same functions. You've got home, you've got media, um, you've got the FM radio, Sirius satellite radio, your Bluetooth, your USB connection. All that stuff you've got the you know, your phone settings you've got your vehicle settings you've got all your cameras this truck given that it's set up for fifth wheel towing does have the you know two and seven or sorry the four and seven pin wiring i don't know why i keep saying two it has a four and seven pin wiring um, for your fifth wheel hitch in the bed it's also got it up the bumper uh, next to the class five hitch get on it a little bit and start at 20 there now up to 40. I, I think the difference between the ice and the 68 RFE is the 68 RFE is not afraid to rev sooner and, and sort of put that power down here. This one, the engine has a, a peak torque lower in the acceleration curve, lower in the RPM curve at um, 1,350 RPMs. I think the uh, my truck, the 68 RFE, that has the standard output uh, peak torque is at uh, 1,700 RPM, still low, but this one has peak torque a little bit lower so you get that a little bit sooner just the way it's been set up and tuned it's really meant to apply that power when it's being lugged towing if you're not being lugged you're going to rev right past it and you won't feel it i think is kind of the general uh, consensus anyway this option here is another sort of spot in my truck that is blank it's just a blank area this is the lane keep assist you can turn it off if you don't like it um, otherwise it shows up on your dash here as a little icon and if you're, like I said, if you learn how to drive the dually, big help.
Um, you know, first couple times I took this out, road got narrow, I just took a look at it, took a look at my mirrors, but it's really not that difficult to drive. I mean, I get out of my house just fine. The only area where it would be a problem is if you're in a tight parking lot and the spaces are really, really narrow. Um, go ahead and look at this view here while we're stopped. We've got the surround camera, we've got the mirror cameras. Uh, you can do the split view. Um, it's kind of trippy to look at while you're going straight, but it, it can be really quite helpful when you're towing. Um, other than that, it's, it's really not that difficult of a truck to drive. Um, everything's fairly smooth. You know, you get up to speed. Everything you would expect of a $100,000 truck. Um, I suppose take that with the grain of salt. Some of you are like, $100,000 truck, that's stupid, it shouldn't exist. Um, I suppose some people buy these trucks because they want a, sort of a dual purpose vehicle. They want something that, you know, is enough and nice enough for the family, go on vacations, kids are happy, but also take it to work and put it to work, you know, during the week. Uh, my uncle bought this truck, he has a fifth wheel. Um, that thing, I think, is 17,000 pounds empty, close to 20,000 pounds full, you know, fully loaded. So um, this truck, max towing at 32,000 is more than enough for anything that um, you know he could he could use so i'm going to go ahead and uh, put the exhaust brake on i did mention earlier that with this transmission being a little bit more stout you do tend to feel it on the downshifts more especially with the exhaust brake on um, i don't think you'll hear it too much through the camera um, I, I know last time i didn't hear it much but it uh, it really does seem to work a little bit even better than the standard output uh, 68 RFE exhaust brake um, which surprised me because I know the exhaust brake on a 68 RFE is quite good I'd say from what I've heard I haven't been in a uh, Ford or GMC but I've heard it's been better than those I know TFL has done a lot of uh, fast lane truck on YouTube they've done a lot of uh, sort of tests on the Ike Gauntlet towing heavy using the exhaust brake and found the Cummins exhaust brake to be one of the most effective. Um, this one in particular, I would say, is certainly more effective than the one on the standard output. So if you want the exhaust brake, uh, if you're towing heavy, high output certainly makes more sense. If you are towing occasionally, towing for fun, you know, you got a fifth wheel, you're going to the desert, going camping, whatever, maybe a couple times a month, not really needed. Both engines will serve you well. The high output, outer transmission I'd say more effective exhaust brake um, that would do quite nicely um, it would do it a little bit more easily you might not have to worry about as much um, there's the exhaust brake kicking on there and uh, there so you might not have to worry about it as much um, when you are towing but other than that there's really no need for the high output other than to say you have it Okay, squeeze on through here with this, there we go. There's no need to really have it unless you're towing something heavy frequently. Um, otherwise, it simply makes your life a little bit easier, but it is not needed. The Cummins, the standard output Cummins, 370 horse and 850 pound feet of torque is more than enough engine to pull you anywhere you need to go. I don't know if you heard that just then, that was the exhaust brake kicking on entirely unnecessary but uh, kind of like one of my favorite noises in the Cummins to listen to. Um, anyway, I, I just flipped tow haul mode on. We're going to go up that same hill and uh, just kind of listen to how the RPMs are a little different. And um, oh, there you go. That's the, that's all exhaust brake. I didn't even hit the brake pedal to stop just then. Um, we're going to keep the tow haul mode on. Uh, again, not loaded, but just go up this hill and see how it feels. See the pants wise. So that did not shift. Um, I think that probably even hurt us going up the hill simply because the peak torque range was below where the, it was revving or taking that hill at. So uh, interesting little test there, but uh, I, I'd say obviously if you're not towing in Holland, don't put it in tow haul. Um, but it, it does sound good when you're in tow haul with the exhaust brake on. We'll come back on into the driveway here and uh, I'll meet back up with you guys for some final thoughts. Okay, so 
that was the drive. Um, it drives pretty well. Like there, there's nothing wrong with the ride until you hit a big bump and then there's something really uncomfortable with it. Um, seats. First of all, that's how long it takes these guys to open up. You gotta sit there and wait for them. Looking at the seats, these are the full leather seats. Usually in my truck, this is suede and this is suede. Um, here they've got the leather stitching. So that's really the only difference with the seats. Um, oh, and down here, this is suede in mine, but uh, full leather in this truck. Center console, you've got the uh, wood grain. I don't know if it's real wood or faux wood, but uh, it's a wood grain, simulated wood grain uh, cover. It clicks into place. Same deal with this one. These are the coins, coin storage area. You've got the center console down here. And this has a dividing, I guess, piece of plastic that folds up that you can put into place that uh, separates these two large areas. Again, they've got the same thing in my truck. It's sort of like a geometry trig reference. That's there. Never once used it, um, but it is there. Here's your uh, top sort of center console box area with the USB-A in there. Step out. The um, ground, I guess these steps do drop down pretty far. It's not that big of a step. It's pretty easy to get into and out of. All right, so that will wrap up the review of the 2022 Ram 3500 Cummins High Output Night Edition Limited um, Crew Cab with the eight foot bed. If you found this video helpful, enjoyable, uh, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and as always, stay tuned for more.